Hey folks, it's Nate, and I have teased you with this project for long enough. It's time to get started. Stay tuned if you want to see this Warren M12K get stuffed between the frame rails of this 2014 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited on a custom-built home fab bumper. <laughs> All right, folks, I've been talking about this for a long time. I know it seems like I've been teasing it since the moment I finished the Jeep Wrangler LJ bumper that I did almost a year ago at this point. But today, I'm getting started. I've got some steel behind the camera that you can't see. I've got some tube over here. In this video, I think we're going to get quite a bit of use out of the upgrades I've made to the shop over the past year or so. That is the Yes Welder Cut 55 DS, the Yes Welder MIG 205 DS, and of course, there might even be some affordable bending going on in there. We're gonna design and build a front bumper for this, for my wife's Jeep Wrangler Unlimited. And while we're designing that bumper, we're gonna stuff this behemoth of a winch in between the frame rails. And I'm gonna talk about some of the things I've had to do already that are done uh, in order to accommodate that. So let's get started by showing you one thing that is required if you're gonna put a winch between these frame rails or at least a winch of the right size. <laughs> All right, so first things first, when you take the bumper off, you're going to have to disconnect the fog lights or driving lights that are mounted in the bumper. And then you're going to pretty quickly notice that there's a vacuum pump mounted right here on the frame. With that thing here, unless you've got a really small winch, uh, you really can't fit it between these frame rails, unless you make it off-centered or something like that. And nobody really wants to do that. If you want to center the winch, you need to disconnect that pump. You need to cut its wires. You need to rerun them up under the hood. There's also a vent tube and a vacuum tube that are attached to it. I'm gonna run them back up under the hood and then you can get a relocation bracket. There are several manufacturers that make them. I'll put a link to those products on Amazon if you uh, if you wanna go purchase one. What I did is I grabbed some steel off the pile and I made myself a bracket that looks surprisingly like the metal cloak bracket. I didn't do that on purpose, just there's only so much space under the hood here and it just happens that Mine ended up similar to theirs. There's a couple of designs. Some are beefier, some are less. Mine works, gets the job done, and now we can move on. All right, so I don't know if you've ever seen the Warren M12000 up close, but it is a big behemoth of a winch. The one I've got has seen better days. It's got no cable on it. It's got no instruction manual. I've got really no information about it. I've had to do a bunch of research as to how to even mount the damn thing. But uh, what you're gonna notice throughout this video is that it mounts differently than any winch you're probably used to unless you're used to working with larger winches like this. If you've ever seen the Warren uh, 8274, it, uh, it mounts using four bolts on the face of the winch instead of four bolts on the bottom like most modern winches do. And in the case of the M12K, that's because of the additional capacity, or at least according to the instruction manual that I found. So in posting pictures of this thing on the internet, the number of people that have told me I'm mounting the winch wrong is staggering. Now, with that in mind, what I have to do is design the winch plate so that the four mounting holes basically surround where the winch cable comes through the fair lead. So that's what I'm trying to do now. The JK lends itself very well to that design because the mounting for the bumper is also on the face of these frame horns. So my plan is to basically make a winch mounting plate that is something like a big U-channel that the winch mounts to the back of. And then I have to extend the bottom. There's a there's two more bolt, there's two more mounting holes on the bottom of the winch that also have to be incorporated in order to get a good solid mount. So the first thing I'm gonna do is design that plate. And then the second thing I'm gonna do is design the bottom plate to pick up those other two bottom holes. This is what I made out of cardboard. I've learned a bit since the last time I did this. I made all these cuts here with the plasma cutter and then I cleaned them up with my angle grinder. And these, I did the cut and fold method that I used on the, uh, on the LJ bumper, but I got me a little new leverage this time. This guy works so much better to make these bends. 
this cut here was the first one I did and it was a bit jagged and ragged. This one on the bottom came out real good though. So I cut, left some tabs, three of them, and then I bent using this little table here uh, and that big nasty wrench right here. And I mean, check it out. That's pretty, uh, pretty solid, right? It doesn't rock and wobble. It sits flat on the bench. I mean, I'm gonna call it square. The idea is this is the front face of the bumper. This is essentially my winch plate. So what I'm trying to figure out here is the center line of the winch versus the center line of the bumper. And, you know, just basically trying to figure out where the winch is going to be placed, how I'm going to handle a plate for the bottom here to mount to these bottom holes, and how I'm going to center and then drill those holes accurately. Well, folks, through the magic of YouTube, you don't know what I went through to get this, but... I've got it centered and whatnot. I'm much happier with the placement of the upper and lower supports there. That upper bend, the upper gusset support there, was like a half inch out from the bottom. And it really bothered me. So I just spent about three hours cutting it off and redoing it. But I think it's worth it because in the end, this looks so much better. I do have a clearance problem. Over here, the, uh, the bracket that used to hold that little vacuum pump is still in the way. I'm gonna have to grind that down, but that's okay. I've got grinders that'll get in there. And the bigger problem is that cross member behind the, or in front of the radiator. That's where the grill mounts, and I don't wanna cut that high into the grill to clear the winch. That's about how this is gonna look sitting in the front of the Jeep. Obviously, uh, once the grill's back on, I'm gonna have to see if there's room for the handle which engages and disengages. That's gonna be tricky, right? That has to be able to turn. And right now it looks like there won't be enough room, right? So see how that is. That's definitely gonna contact the grill with a clearance for that or something. So at this point, after a bit of thought, I decided that given the use of this Jeep, given how much trail time it's gonna see, and basically how nice I'd like this to look when I'm done, I decided that I could not simply cut into the grill the way I was hoping to in order to make this winch fit. So instead I decided to change the way that the winch plate is going to work, and you'll see in just a moment, but the plan is to make sort of a center hump that's going to move the winch away from the grill of the Jeep by anywhere from an inch to two inches. It should give the whole plate an interesting look. I don't think I've ever seen a manufacturer that tried this particular approach to fitting the winch between the frame rails. So uh, we're gonna take a little gamble, see how it pays off.
All right, folks, so here is an update. Obviously, I've gotten some work done since the last time I shot any video, but what we have here is an adapted winch plate. So the next goal here is to mock fit this with the winch in it to the front of the JKU. So there it is on the front of the JKU. You can get kind of an appreciation here for how freaking deep this winch is. It barely fits in there and I had to step it out. Well, now it clears the grill without having to cut the grill and it, it fits in there just right. All right, so what I have to do now is another bit of nerve wracking drilling for me. And that is, I need to get three holes on this side and four holes on this side that line up with those horns on the end of the JK frame. So what I've done is I took a piece of cardboard and I cut it to be basically a template of the face of this bumper. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line this up on the front of the Jeep in the same way that this lines up, you know, that the bumper lines up with those frame horns. And then I'm going to try to punch holes through it in the spots where I need the holes. So what I did is I took this and I clamped it to the front of the frame on those horns. And I took a nail and I just pushed it through the center of each hole into the cardboard. And then I pulled it out here and I made sure each one of these was straight through. Like I said, three on this side, four over on this end that you can't really see in frame. Uh, now what I'm going to do is basically I clamp this to the back of the bumper. I'm just going to take a small drill bit and go through each of these holes and drill a very, very small, not even a pilot hole, just a mark. All right, so let's see if that worked. Moment of truth. Look at that. We got four little marks right where the holes need to be. And surprisingly, they line up right with the marks that I made. We'll see here on this side. See how they're a little bit low? The marks are a little low. If I would have just drilled those, then uh, this would have been off. That or this is off. I don't know. We'll find out, I guess, when I try to mount the thing. So, uh, what do you guys think so far? It looks... It looks very incomplete, especially without the winch in there. All right, so this is just kind of part of the process, right? I put these lower reinforcement bends onto this plate and I was real happy about how they came out. And now they're not gonna work with the design as it's changed. So uh, what I'm gonna do is cut this, this, and this bracing off. Uh, then I have to order another piece of quarter inch plate that's basically going to go from here to here and here, right? It's gonna basically fill this whole section in and it's gonna come back to accommodate those bottom holes in the M12K. So these have to come off, which is unfortunate because I was, I put work into that and now it's junk. So now we have what should be a functional base to our bumper. This thing should be a solid winch plate. There's some bracing I want to add here, but I think that's going to get worked into the next part, which is the part I've been looking forward to for this whole project. And that is, now that we have a good solid base, we get to start being creative and turn this into a good looking off-road bumper. So my plan here is to build this out in some manner so that it comes up toward the fender here 
and then I'm going to cover this in some way, right? This is all very fluid in my mind at the moment. Uh, I want to cover up the frame rail, but I can't go too far in here because the winch comes up to... Folks, I don't know if you noticed, but it's been a little while. I've gotten a bit done since I last turned on this camera. Uh, and that's because I have sort of figured out that a good way to get the little stuff done is to just put the camera away and work at it. And then I'll come back and show you what I did. Because, well, to be honest, taking you through every little piece of nitty gritty gets, uh, well, it eats up a lot of time. So basically what I've done is I finished up the front, this angle here. I got these gussets on the sides. I don't remember if I've showed you that already or not, but these... These gussets are here on the side. Uh, they're here to support this angle right here, right? And I've got a plate cut out. It's not welded in yet, but I've got a plate for the bottom. Right now the winch is inside of here. I need to cut a hole for where the fair lead is going to go and where the winch line is going to come out. Recovery points I picked up from Barnes four wheel drive. I'm not a big fan of face mounting recovery points, but I didn't really have much choice on this particular bumper. So I got some advice online, which is basically to chamfer all the edges. And when you're welding to try to have gravity help pull the weld 
pull sort of into your joint. So that's what I'm doing here. I also drilled some holes in the back and plug welded as uh, hot as I could from the back of the quarter inch plate through into, you know, a good quarter to a half inch into the recovery point. I think they're pretty solid. Now we need a place for the winch line to come through, right? So I basically took some hole saws of appropriate size and cut two holes at either end of where the uh, fair lead is going to mount. And then I connected the dots with the plasma cutter. And uh, what we got is a pretty nice opening for the winch line. All right, so I'm in the middle of making another template out of cardboard. And I just, I wasn't filming it. And I thought maybe I would quick give you guys a... This turned out to be complex. I'm trying to cover the back here. So I made this, kind of fits in here. And then of course it comes up at an angle and then I need to meet up with this here, which I was like, how am I gonna do that? So I made another angle here. So I'm gonna make a piece that looks kind of like this, right? And then of course I have to cut it off flush with the front here or top. That's I basically uh, lined it all up. I made this cut and crease. Now that fits there. And now I basically uh, hold it with one hand, take my Sharpie and trace. Now I know where the next cut has to be. And you can see how this, how imprecise this is because I drew two lines and they're in two different places, even though I lined it up the same way. So. You know, this is sometimes a more of an art than a, than geometry, right? There's a lot more subjective nature to this stuff. So, but yeah, I think this is going to be a pretty cool uh, end cap if I can pull it off. And then I'll just have to make a cap for the very end, which will be another piece of cardboard that I just kind of make on the fly. But yeah, I'm going to cut this and then I guess that, and that should fit here. All right, so I've got the end caps on at the end of the bumper. Now it's time to do the thing that I've been looking forward to and dreading at the same time. And that is this hoop, this bull bar that I want to put on the front. I kind of have a vague idea that I want to come across here and attach here somewhere. Everything's going to be at about a 45 degree angle. It's going to come up from here at a 45 and it's going to bend at a 45. And then same thing on that side. Now, I bought tube that might be enough that I could mess it up once. Not enough that I could mess it up twice. Maybe mess up one bend, for example. This could be interesting. We may end up with no bull bar because uh, if I mess this up, there's really no uh, there's no recourse other than <laughs> getting more tube. So. Um, one thing I've picked up recently is a chop saw. I'm going to use that to cut a 45 at one end of the tube. Then I'm going to kind of guesstimate how far away I want it to come and then bend a 45 and go that way. And then I need to figure out how to do the same thing on that side. So it's going to be interesting, folks. And then to weld it on here is going to be even more fun. So uh, yeah, wish me luck. All right, folks, so you remember this thing? This is that template that I bent in another video. This is a 90 degree bend using inch and a half tube on my affordable benders inch and a half tube die. I need to figure out how many inches of material I need to bend 45 degrees. Should be half of this, right? This took about 15 inches to bend this. So roughly seven, seven and a half inches is what I should need to bend a 45. I've got a 45 degree cut on here. That's what's gonna attach to my bumper. I've got a rough idea that I'd like this to come up about seven or eight inches before the bend, or I should say at its highest, right? Which should get me about where I've made this red mark. Now, I think that means I should come back from this red mark about three to four inches 
and start my 45 degree bend. I have no idea if this math is sound. I'm guessing, folks. We'll see if it works. <laughs> All right, folks, we have kind of a bull bar. I know it isn't much, uh, but I wasn't going for much, to be honest. I was going for a very simple bar that was slightly above the winch. Didn't turn out quite like I wanted it to, and I did try to film the process. I don't think I'm going to use any of the footage. Believe me, you're not missing much. I need a ton of practice with both the bender. The, bi the bends were actually, uh, I got them kind of spot on, almost first try. Uh, but the angled cuts, the sort of coping cuts on the the ends of this tube were not pretty. I did them wrong like three times. Luckily, I had made the tube too long to start with, just by luck, chance, whatever. Um, but what I have here now, I think, is what I'm going to weld in, what I'm going to tack in in just a moment. As I get better with tube bending, I will be happy to show you guys some of the tips and tricks I'm pr picking up, but... I gotta be honest, I am a complete novice here, and anything I showed you was gonna just be a circus. So, you're just gonna have to live with that until I get better with this bender. Well folks, it's been a ton of work, and about, what? I started this just before Easter, and it's the end of May, so, uh, like two months worth of evenings, a couple hours here, a couple hours there. Life has been crazy, so I haven't been able to focus on this like I really wanted to. If you were to build this bumper, you could probably get it done in a weekend, maybe two, if you could focus on it for eight to ten hours a day. Or if you were a professional fabricator that wasn't constantly getting distracted by family and soccer and dinner time and family emergencies and uh, yeah, sick family members. Um, but... At any rate, here it is, folks. It's about as done as it's gonna get in this video. Next steps are to get the winch fixed up and put into this thing. Obviously, there is a ton of finish weld to be done on this thing, a ton of cleanup to be done on this thing. All of the welds were welded inside and out for strength, so the outside welds, I'm going to grind a number of them down just for the sake of making the outside look cleaner. Uh, being unable to bend this stuff like in a press or in some kind of a break, uh, meant I had to do a whole lot of cut and weld to get this thing together. And, you know, there's really no reason to have a weld here if we don't have to have one here. It's welded on the inside. Same deal with down here, up here, all these. Um, the structural things like these uh, recovery points, I'm going to clean these up just a tad and leave them as is. I hope you guys have enjoyed the ride. Um, this was quite a bit more work than the LJ bumper was when I did it. I also incorporated things in this bumper that I simply could not do in the LJ bumper, like this hoop. Folks, I hope you liked this video. I hope that you like the bumper. I hope that you enjoyed the journey to get here, and I hope that you consider subscribing to the channel uh, in order to see more projects like this. I don't churn this size of a project out frequently, but if you've been paying attention, they're getting more and more frequent. I'm getting more and more bold with the sort of things that I'm trying to do. And hopefully, if you're interested in that sort of thing, you'd like to come along for the ride. Don't forget to support SWB Crawler on swbcrawler.com. You can find merchandise. You can find our link to our Patreon. You can find a whole bunch of featured items from various videos, including the things mentioned in this video, including some of my welding and camera gear. You should just head on over there and check it out. And with that, folks, I'm going to say this thing is finally done. And I have a whole lot of footage to edit. So I'll see you in a month. <laughs> Remember, folks, get out there and wheel. I'll catch you in the next one.